Hello and welcome to the Forge Behind the House today. Please excuse the mess. I've got a lot of cleaning up to do to be able to do videos out here, but I wanted to do a video today showing how to make one of our spoons for a Dutch oven cooking. And this is the spoon that I'm actually going to make today because I made it today, and this is a after video. So stick with me. I'm going to show you how these are made, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. If you want to help contribute to the channel, you can check out our Patreon. I'll put it down in the description on this video. And also, you can help us by buying our products, the things that I make over at uh, oldtownblacksmith.com. Thanks for sticking by, and we appreciate your support. So for the two spoons in the ladle, you start out with 24 inch pieces of 3 8 inch thick bar stock, solid bar stock. We're gonna run through three of them and show you how that goes. I do it a little bit different than other people because I do production, so I do it quickly, and I do it so that it's uh, replicable. You'll want to get the end of your bar to a working heat. Bright orange or better. Start flattening it out. I don't want to spread it too wide, so I'm not using a rounding hammer here. Stop like that. What I want to make sure of is that it'll fit down in this hardy hole. You'll see why in just a few minutes. flatten it out too much that it won't fit in that hardy hole. So I use the hardy hole to do some bends on this. We'll take this guy over here to the horn. So get it turned in the right direction. Back on itself a little. So get a curl like that. Make sure it still fits in there and it does. Now I'm going to heat it up about, about five inches, but I'm going to do the other two like this before I do that. We're going to heat this up about five inches, so I'm putting it a little farther into the forge. to about six inches and I'm going to quench this very tip right here because I don't want it to roll back out. See how that's cold now? That goes in here and for this I want it to be on this side of the hardy hole because the shape of my animal. Go in like that. touch mark on there then we're going to put a twist on it. Again about six inches. Which just the roll to the hardy hole. And over until it just touches the anvil. Every anvil is different. This is how I do mine for production because it saves me from having to put a hardy tool in there all that good stuff. And it keeps them all exactly the same. We're very close to it. Two, three. says I did it. I'll put one on each one of my handles. Just about there. I'm gonna hang that off so it doesn't distort it. Maybe you can see that. Then we're gonna 
gonna put this whole thing in, we're gonna put a twist right here. So I'm gonna do the other two touch marks and then we'll get to the twist. Which will require a camera reset. You see me tapping it like that. If this comes out of alignment, left or right, just use the amplifier. Tap it back to where I want it. Watch the part here where the actual handle is. I've got to work fast. He's all approximately the same. It also gives me a space to twist it. Try to give them the same amount of twist every time. Like that. Typically, I'll come back and straighten that out a little bit. Nice and straight, and that's ready to just quench in water and chill until I'm ready to do the other end. I'll do all three of those like that, and I'll be right back. measuring these or making marks on them. They're all pretty close to being the same every time. They do differ a little bit because it's handmade and that's just the way it is and that's the way it's supposed to be. It shows you it's not made in a factory in China somewhere. Notice that I am working with bare hands. That's because I know where the heat's at. I don't burn myself very often, but you have to stay very mindful of what you're doing. Gloves just getting away, in my opinion, are dangerous sometimes. all three of those and then we'll uh, get them cooled off on this end and then I'll work this other end into what we're going to attach to the actual spoon. So now we've got our ends heated up where we're going to be attaching the, the bowls of the spoons. I'm just going to show you how you do that. We start out by making a taper. You want to make all your tapers relatively the same. always give it another heat and tweak it out a little bit. The idea is to do it in as few heats as possible, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do to make it right. That's what, makes, that's what makes the difference between a lot of people's work. They just go with it the way it is. I let the steel tell me what it wants to do. Oh, hush. You're the blacksmith. You make it the way you want it. Mr. George Lewis, a mentor when I was doing a 
fabricating work. You always said if you want it perfect, make it perfect. That rings in my head every time I think about leaving something less than perfect. If I would have left it the way it was to begin with, it would have been just fine and not noticeable to anybody other than me. And I'd have thought about it forever. It would have bothered me. So to make my spoon heads or spoon bowls, I cut these out of a big piece of 16 gauge that I have over there and I use a little template this guy right here I just draw around it with a sharpie make several of them at one time but then what I'll do is heat it up and hammer it out on the swage block what a swage block is is it has divots in it for different sized things now you wouldn't want it exactly this shape but you use this as a guide to help you to help you form it uh, you don't want it exactly like that because that's, that's a weird shape and nobody wants a spoon like that and I've actually did a little work with this one to grind it out a little more. This is what we use, and this is the best place I can put it right now. I can't think of anywhere else out here where I can set up the camera and actually do it. We'll be working on that a little bit sometime this week. But I like to use these. These I bought from Harbor Freight a couple of years ago, and they're just perfect for holding little things like that. When you work them, flipping it over, very handy. I guess I could make a pair, but these work great, and they were like 10 bucks. And until they wear out, I'm not going to make a pair. Pop that in the forwards there. Also, what I like to use instead of using this, uh, this this is a cross peen hammer. This is actually an engineer's hammer. It's got it's been rounded off a little bit, but it'll leave big dents in your stuff. So here's a hammer that needs to be cleaned up some. This is one that I made. And this is a rounding hammer. It gives you a it's got a more rounded edge there. It gives you a, a, a better form. Spoon it. Start here. Put the pointy end first. Got to give it a couple taps to the when you're moving it around kind of the whole time. Things. Then I'll do a little extra forming on wherever I'm done and straighten it out on the end. It's really difficult to do with that angle. It's got a little bend in there. We're going to go ahead and dish it on out and fix it up. it in. Thank you. 
there's your basic spoon blade. Just like that. Just dished out just enough. But I still could take a little out of there. But I can do some final tillering on it whenever I actually get the spoon built to do it cold. Pops that scale off like that. We're going to come back once we get it all together, clean it up with a wire brush. That's a smooth way. Now I'm going to move on to uh, drilling some holes and um, attaching these. First things first, we're going to take our handy dandy Sharpie here and we're just going to eyeball where we want it. Now you want to leave enough space so that this sits just like that. So you want to leave enough space that you'll be putting your rivet at least about a quarter of an inch away from the side, the edge of that. So look at this, find about where center is, about where I think that's going to be. And it's not super critical. And then between the two, you also want to leave enough space that your rivets aren't overlapping. Make sure it's pretty close to center. You want it to be really close to center because it really shows up once you put the rivets in there. So. Make a couple little marks with a Sharpie or pencil or whatever you like, something you can see. Then we grab a hammer, and I'm not looking for that hammer. I'm looking for my other hammer. I don't know what I did with it. Let's see. I'll use this one. don't like to use my rounding hammer or a hitting hard tools because it'll scar it and I like to do pretty fine work with that rounding hammer sometimes. So this is just a, a, a center punch that I've made or a, a marking tool. I'm just going to put it there and put a divot in this so that I'll have a spot to start my drill bit. On each one of those black marks that I've made. We'll get into making some tools sometimes soon too. It's a very, very important tool to have in the shop. Very easy to make if you got the right material. About the easiest tool there is to make. So if you can see there, hopefully I'm putting this in view. You can see there it's got two little divots so that your uh, drill head won't wander around when you start to drill it. Now we're going to go drill that out. I'm going to just work on one from this point forward to show you how to do it and then I'll come back and do the others. Try to save some camera time. Now it's just a matter of using those to drill, using those little divots I just made to drill some quarter inch holes in here for a quarter inch rivet. I'm going slow because it takes away more, keeps my drill bit from heating up. That's through. And now when it's through, I want that quarter inch to fit in there nicely, and I'll show you. It doesn't. See, it doesn't. It's not gonna fit in there very well. So, I'll take this, very easily, kind of wallow it around like that. Now, slips in there still snugly. Also, this is gonna spread out whenever we start pounding on it. But it actually gets in there, that's what we want. drill press would be nice but right now there is very limited shop space and I need some oil for that. WD-40 on there ought to help that from happening. About time to sharpen up my bits. Definitely time to sharpen up my bits. Hard to find your WD-40 whenever your kid's got bicycle parts everywhere that he likes to work on.
Right, so that's done, and now we'll move over and we'll make a hole in the, a single hole in the head. Okay, so now we're back to, I want to put a single hole in this. You don't want to put your second hole in there because it's going to line up depending on where it line. It's going to go in there depending on where it lines up with the handle that we just made. But you want to look at this and kind of just imagine where the center line is. Feel free to draw on it because it's going to get cleaned off anyway. So I'm just guessing that's about the center line. Looks about right. It's maybe a little more flared than that. We're going to put our first, I don't know if you can see that. Make sure I'm in, in the camera here. Okay. So I just made a, a, a line here that I guess to make to be the center line. You do want it to be pretty close. You can make yourself a template if you like or whatever, but I don't do that. I rarely mess one up. When I do, I toss it out and kick myself in the butt. Then we're going to want our thing to land at least three sixteenths to a quarter inch away from that edge right there. So that's where I'm going to make my spot. And I'm going to go ahead and make a divot in it like we did before. Always look several times to make sure that's where I want it. That is where I want it. Go ahead and commit, Brent. And we've got to find that hammer again. There, that, that's what I was looking for. Going to make our mark there. So now we've got our little divot mark there. And I'm just going to go over there and drill it out. Probably won't put that on camera because it's drilling a hole. I mean, you got it, right? Quarter inch hole just like the last one. And then we'll start making some rivets. All right, now to make a hand hammered rivet, which gives it a nice hand hammered texture around the heads and looks really, looks really cool, especially if you know what you're looking at. Uh, so I've got a piece of quarter inch rod in there, quarter inch round rod, just regular hot roll. And I'm using this small ball peen hammer. And we're gonna peen the end of it with this. Now you don't wanna take big strokes, just small strokes. And I'm trying to do this while one handing a camera, so we'll see. Work around the edge a little. Maybe you'll be able to see this develop. You want to get some good strikes in the middle every now and then to spread out a little material. And since this is mild steel, as most of the steel that we're working with on this, it will move cold, but it will crack also if you try to move too much at one time. We're just trying to get it to flare out a little bit so it'll stay in the hole. Gives it that nice texture. You can see that nice hand hammered, peened over texture. See that? I like that look, and it lo really looks good when it's on the uh, on the piece, and then it's turned black. Now it looks like class, and it, it is class. Hand hammered, hand hammered steel rivets. Steel rivets don't move. So we'll do that, and then I'll show you how we measure it out, and then cut it to size, and then peen it over into the piece. Now, as you can see, I've just threaded the rivet through the piece here, on through the back side, and left it hanging out this side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark that about a sixteenth of an inch from being flush. And that'll give us some to peen over and make it look nice. See if I can, uh, I'll mark that and then I'll show you where the mark is because it's hard to, I don't have three hands. Maybe I'll get some more, uh, some more camera equipment to hold things in place. But for right now, this is what we're working with. All right, so we've got our three pieces here. I just cut that rivet off where I showed you, uh, I'll show you again here. I don't think I recorded that actually. All right, so we're gonna go in through the back side of this and up through here. Remember, we don't drill that second hole yet until we get this rivet set. Now, look in close right here. You can see about how much rivet I left up there. And it's not much, about a 16th of an inch, maybe a little bit more. So now I'm just gonna peen that over real easily. I'm gonna use a little bit larger ball peen hammer to get it started. That'll really lock it in. If you don't hit it hard, it'll split it. At this point, I start working around the edges a little more. I spread that out in there so it's pretty getting pretty tight. I want to left a little loose so that I can adjust for the other rivet. 
And then once I get it spread out about to there, that's really tight. I'll take the smaller one that I did the back with and texture it to make it look nice. And that really gives it a hand hammered rivet look. And the reason for that is because it is a hand hammered rivet. Give me some crap you bought off a of wish. Alright, now that that's set, you can hold this and kind of look down it and center it up. Once it's centered up, I like the way it looks, come in and make a mark to be sure that that's where it stays, right in the middle there. All right, then I'll come back, I'll drill that hole, I'll make another rivet just like that one, put it in there, and then we'll uh, we'll get to cleaning this thing up, make, giving it a little bit of a bend and making it its final shape. It's just a matter of putting a little bit of a bend in it right here because it is being used for Dutch oven cooking. So you want a decent angle to it, not like so. Not so that it can be, you can keep yourself away from the fire and still use it. So just bend it over a little bit like that. Then we'll clean this bad boy up, quench it down, clean it up, and uh, pop it in the oven. First, let me do this. Now what we want to do is clamp it back in our vise here and we're going to use a wire cup wheel on an angle grinder to clean some of the scale off of it. And if you're using any kind of a wire brush like this Please, please, please wear safety glasses because it swings these things out and they stick in. I always wear a, always make sure I've got an apron on as well because they will stick in you and they hurt. This will make pretty short work of your forge scale, leave you with a nice shiny piece. And then what I do is I rub it down with regular vegetable oil like you would uh, fry food with, and it goes into the oven at 500 degrees for one hour. I do that twice, and that puts a food safe coating on it. So I'm gonna clean this up and do that, and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like after. All right, so after putting it in the oven with some vegetable oil on it for one hour at 500 degrees it comes out with this nice kind of a mahogany color you know but it's nice and uh seasoned like you would your cast iron pots pretty much and that's your finished product i would probably before it goes out to anybody i'll put another coat on there and do it again it'll make it nice shiny black but i really like this mahogany color as well and i wanted to finish this video up so there you are finished product one of the spoons and of course the set comes with a spoon a ladle a uh, strainer spoon, which is basically this, but with five holes in it. And then the rack and tongs, lid lifter, and oh, and the folding trivet. I'll get around to showing all of those things. They won't be on this video. Those will be uh, for Patreon uh, subscribers. And you can find that link down in the description there. It's uh, at patreon.com or you can find these products at oldtownblacksmith.com. I appreciate you standing by and watching today, and uh, our videos will get better and better because today was kind of a trial run. I'm going to start setting things up so that I can actually have cameras where I need them and all that kind of stuff. But again, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the videos, and we'll see you next time.